नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम today i will continue and prove jacobin criterion uh, assuming the two lemmas we have proved and uh, i will uh, recall those two lemmas when we actually need it so uh, let me just uh, recall what we want to prove and what are the ingredients so uh, today the goal is and then we will state precisely the we want to compute compute or calculate uh, the singular locus of a uh, affine algebra a which is k x1 to xn modulo some ideal modulo the ideal and the generated finitely generated therefore it is generated by some m polynomials and this ideal we will write it here and what does one mean by singular locus that means all those prime ideals in this affine algebra so that the localization there are regular local so the prime ideals will look like p by a where a is an ideal in the polynomial ring and this p is a prime ideal which contains a so this p is actually prime ideal in the polynomial ring and we are looking at every prime ideal in a looks like this so that is a notation and we want to know um, when is exactly when exactly the local ring uh, a localized at this p by this is regular look is regular and such a criterion you see in general it is not easy for arbitrary commutative ring to decide what are exactly the prime ideals where it is regular but for a fine case it is here in terms of the equations so that is what uh, we want to we want to know and what this is our goal okay so what are the ingredients in the proof that we will need so the answer will involve involves uh, first of all it involves irreducible components of components of the spectrum which contain is given prime ideal p by a so in this is uh, in in purely algebraic language so this means minimal primes of the ring a that means minimal primes a contained in q contained in p where these a, these are in the spectrum of k x1 to x n so in k x1 to x n this p may not be minimal over a so we we so look at the minimal primes of a uh, which are minimal over this these are these correspond to the irreducible components and what else 
so this is one and the matrices the rank so the matrices we got it from the defining equations of a so the rank of the matrices and how do the matrix arise that is by differentiating so i'll just write my rank of a matrix like this some polynomial g i j the entries are in g i j and their entries are in actually this is a matrix of some order i'll just write here m and k entries are in the uh, polynomial ring mod a prime id and that you can think because this is an integral domain you could also think that this matrices are contained in a matrices with entries in the quotient field so this is subset of m m k in the quotient field of this so therefore the usual linear algebra should help us to compute this rank that's what last time also in the two lemmas uh, this was uh, seen okay so to be more precise now let us state what we want to prove so the theorem we want to prove is this is called jacobian criterion because it involves the jacobian matrix Okay, so as usual earlier notation, f1 to fm are the generators for the ideal given ideal A, and also we have given a prime ideal P, which is uh, everything is happening in the polynomial ring in n variables over a field K. K is a field. Okay, and Q is a minimal prime. in between this q this is a minimal prime or a that is the situation okay so uh, and what are we denoting uh, i want to denote now uh, if i take this matrix d f i d x j this differentiate these polynomials with respect to the variable x j and read them mod p so this is now a matrix m cross n matrix m are the rows and j are the columns so sometimes it might happen that i would have interchange rows and columns so that that you have to watch out if you have if you have trouble in in one way try the other way uh, so but mostly it should be correct this matrix i want to denote uh, because every time it's uh, too much to write like that so j j for jacobian f1 to fm and semicolon p this is called the jacobian matrix of this equation that p so jacobian matrix of f1 to fm at p so this is a matrix or Uh, the ring k x n x two x n mod p, but that is an integral domain. Therefore, you could also think it's a matrix or the entries in its quotient field. Okay. So the first assertion is a the rank of this matrix has a uh, bound. So rank of j f one to f m. Colon P, this cannot be more than height of Q.
So as I said earlier, it involves the rank and also it involves the irreducible components. There, this is irreducible component is coming from this Q. Okay, and now oh, this inequality you could also write uh, in terms of rank, so the nullity. Actually, I don't like to use the word nullity for many reasons, but uh, that is quite popular for engineers. So this, if you use nullity, then the inequality will get reverse. So nullity of this will be bigger equal to dimension of every irreducible components. component of um, of uh, spec A which contains point P by A. You see re remember this Q is not only one there may be many Qs and we are making this statement so that means this is less than equal to every uh, minimal prime side and when you take the reverse inequality it will become every okay that is the statement a uh, second b then talk about when do equality hold here equality ho if equality holds holds in a then then it is regular then uh, a localized at p by a is regular regular local when it is local already regular local so that is when equality holds now uh, this part c statement will be when the converse of this b holds that means when when exactly the equality holds so C part says C part says um, if actually one would like to one wanted to write here if and only if one would like to have equality holds if and only if the ring is regular local but that does not always happen it happened it depends on the base field so whether the base field is separable or not. So, uh, base field is perfect or not. So, if the quotient field uh, base field is perfect or not, if the quotient field of this ring Kx1 to Xn mod P is separable over K then the converse holds then the converse in b holds so this will particularly will happen in uh, two cases uh, when the base field is separate, uh, perfect uh, characteristic zero fields are always perfect and characteristic p case so i will just recall what is perfect so when this will happen in these two cases k perfect Remember this this field is not algebraic over k in general. So uh, separability should mean that there exists a separating transcendence basis. That means the algebraic part of the uh, that uh, after you attach a transcendence basis, the algebraic part is separable extension, and that means algebraic extension is called separable if every every element has the minimal polynomial does not have repeated roots. Okay, perfect means uh, k to you have a natural map from k to k, namely any a going to a power p, where p now is not a characteristic but it is almost like a characteristic. So, p is called a characteristic exponents, characteristic exponent that is when that is p it is 1 if characteristic of k is 0 
and it is p when characteristic of k is p positive so when this map this map is uh, it's uh, clearly a uh, ring homomorphism because of the definition of the characteristic exponent and when this map is surjective then it is called perfect that is the definition actually surjective that simply means that every element in k has a p root where p is the characteristic exponent okay so for example finite fields are because in the case of finite fields uh, this map is always injective and therefore surjective so p general fields so in, okay or or it can also happen without base ring build uh, the equality in a uh, in equality in uh, so this this equality can also happen without a k being perfect for example it will happen in the case this is about the p now when p is if p is actually a close point a close rational point so that is p is m suffix a which is generated by x1 minus a1 xn minus an where a1 a is a1 to an this is actually in in k power n so these are very special maximal ideals these are the maximal ideals where the the residue fields are k itself it's not changing so the residue fields are uh, not changed and why in this case because let us write uh, this is very important uh, i want to calculate this uh, so in this case i want to write down the jacobian matrix what it means right so the jacobian matrix in this case is what so we have to differentiate the generators and read them mod p now i'll write ma but this is precisely what this is precisely you are putting x i equal to a i so that means this is precisely d f i by d x j s evaluated at that a so this is what exactly you learn in analysis you know, when you expand taylor this that you use such an expansion because you need partial derivative and evaluate at a point there it was no there was no prime ideal there only the points were there so therefore in this case the jacobian matrix f1 to fm at p this is the jacobian matrix of f1 to fm at that point a and this is more familiar object uh, so this is also called a functional matrix at a in analysis people they call it also functional matrix at a okay so and uh, therefore um, also one more comment uh, that because in this case the residue field will not change uh, the this field this this field is k itself so therefore there is no question of separability it's separable always okay so uh, also uh, this matrix in this case this matrix is also denoted by in analysis it is denoted by a differential of differential of f the map f you at a where f you think of f you think of it's f1 to fm and think of this is a map from uh, uh, from km to kn yeah, this is usually do it in uh, real number so or complex number think of this as km to kn to km actually and then you differentiate and take the total differential and evaluate at the point the total differential at a is precisely given by this matrix okay so that was it yes yeah equality in a holds then the ring is regular no no that, uh, that height height comes only the equality here also that will you see it will also be clear because you remember ha uh, it will come in the proof that 
uh, this p will not contain more than one minimal prime then the question will not come right that will happen because if you remember an example last time i gave an example if a prime ideal p lies on two irreducible component then it cannot be non singular so it has to be singular right so because of that this will not happen okay so uh, so now let us ha ah, okay so therefore in that notation uh, i have not completed the sentence here if you take the differential of this map at a this map see this map is the kernel of this map it's a linear map and the kernel of this map is called a tangent space at a so uh, the point is singular if the dimension of this is more than the lower bound you remember i said about uh, we are saying about rank is less equal to height but the, that inequality we when you use instead of rank nullity then the equality will get reverse and uh, just now i said the the kernel is the dimension a dimension of the kernel is the nullity so this kernel is a uh, is a tangent space so the tangent space will have more dimension than the lower bound okay so that's it now let us prove so proof of jacobian criterion and then we will work out some examples concrete example okay so uh, a and p is here and first i want to choose you know the statements a and a b c are about the given minimal prime which is contained in in a and p but now i choose q not here so q not is minimal among all the all the primes which are in between here so this q not is the minimal minimal among all uh, primes in between actually minimal among all minimal primes in between and you look at all minimal primes of a so among them you choose the minimal one so that means it it exactly you the irreducible component so the, the otherwise you see there are embedded primes so i am taking the q q not is the minimal one then but we want to prove about about q so q not will be contained in q and now if i prove see we wanted to prove the inequality for q but if i i want to reduce to the case for proving to q not so so assume suppose suppose i have proved for q not then i want to say that i can deduce for q so assume that we have proved theorem for q not okay then i want to claim that i want to prove it for q so for example um, so let us look at a see what do i want to prove i want to see this rank has nothing to do with q so this rank is same so i want to prove that is less equal to height q but if i have to can smaller one that height is already more so therefore that is three value holds right so that implies inequality in a 
in A for Q as well. Also note that note if Q naught is properly contained in Q, if this, then what what it means that see this Q is minimal prime, this is also minimal prime. That means this is embedded one. So that means um, then AP cannot be regular because we have seen that these are the two two primes and P by A this is passing through both of them. So therefore that ring cannot be regular. This is what we have seen in the example. So therefore in this case A localized at P by A is not regular. Okay. Uh, so that so what about B? Now B is uh, about if equality holds. So if this this is not regular, therefore by B B for Q naught this it's not regular, so inequality cannot hold. So uh, by B by B for Q naught inequality in A is strict for Q naught and once it is strict for Q naught it will be strict for and hence for And the converse of converse of B. So finally, converse of B is trivially true since A localized at P mod A is not regular. So all these comments just say that to prove the theorem, I will assume this the given Q is minimal among the associated primes of A. Okay, so now therefore we concentrate on the case Q not equal to Q. So assume Q not is. This is really simple. I might I might have uh, goofed it a little bit, but when you think about it, uh, just say that if Q naught is smaller than Q naught is strictly smaller than Q, then it, things are easier. Okay. Now, what do you want to prove? In this case, we are looking at the ring K x1, x2, xn mod the ideal. And then we are localizing at P, and we are debating whether this ring, which is a local ring, whether is it regular or not, or when is it regular. So this is the so the prime the maximal ideal here is the P P. So the maximal ideal is strictly speaking the maximal ideal is P mod A, and then localize at P. This is the maximum ideal. So this I am going to denote by M. So we are uh, we are interested in when R M is a regular local ring. Okay. Okay. So this is I think so. And what is the residue field? Residue field is. R by M. Which is. L, uh, which is you take k x one x two x n mod p, 
and then the quotient field. Quotient field of this. That is the residue field. Okay. So, therefore, uh, what we know always the dimension of m by m square as a vector space over L, this dimension is, this is the embedding dimension of R. This is always bigger equal to the dimension of R. And we are debating when will the equality be. Okay. So, equality here if and only R is regular. But what is the dimension that we know? This is the dimension is height of P minus height of Q. This is the dimension. Um, uh, you remember that, uh, so I want to recall here, remember that suppose I have an uh, said this or aside, suppose I have an affine algebra A, affine K algebra and suppose I have a chain of prime ideals. of length n and assume that this is a maximal chain. Maximal means you cannot insert any more prime ideals in between so that, so, so it is a maximal chain of primes in A of primes in A, then this n must be equal to the cool dimension of A by P naught. This we would have deduced from uh, Noether's normalization lemma a long time, right? So, if you use this, then you also get this this equality here. Okay, so that is that is the dimension. Now, therefore, we are debating when will the equality be here? That means when will this be equal to this? So, we want to analyze now when exactly. Um, di, uh, vector space dimension of m by m square is equal to height of p minus height of q. This is what we are looking for. 